the AFC North now. Four teams who I think you could probably make an argument that any of these teams could make the playoffs too. You got the Bengals, Ravens, Browns, and Steelers. Let's start with the big picture here, and the Bengals are favored to win, but it's just plus 150. They're not odds-on favorites. Uh, Ravens actually have the same win total over under, uh, but they are plus 235. Browns not far behind, plus 380. And then you got the Steelers who never finish with a losing record because their head coach is Mike Tomlin, (laughs) who I hope maybe one of these years, one of these decades will win coach of the year. Uh, He'll be in the Hall of Fame having never won coach of the year, but whatever. That's a topic for a different day. Let's start with the Bengals at the top here. Ten and a half. The over is at minus 130. So so Vegas seems to believe that they will hit at least 11 wins. They are favored in every game except for Week 8 at San Francisco and Week 17 at Kansas City. The Bengals are good. They're damn good. Like... I don't the, – the, again, they were – without the quarterbacks and our roster breakdown and all that, they were in the running for a top five roster in football, right? Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see the O-line get a little bit better, right? They got some guys in the secondary, a lot of unproven, so I'd like to see that there. Offensive line did get a little bit better at the end it of last d- year before did. the injuries. No, but you're right, 100%. It did. And you would think with that talent and the group they have there that it will continue to get better. I look at those early season schedule in the first six weeks. I go, you know, they're clearly they're they're better than four out of the six teams for sure. You know, the Ravens in week two, we know that'll be tough. The Seahawks in week six, they got a lot of talent too, but it's at home, so I give them the edge there. I feel like if it was Joe Burrow was a hundred percent healthy and going in training camp, I'd be going. They're going to start five and one, right? They're going to start. You know, no worse than it, it'll be tough for them to start four and two. Somebody's have to do something miraculous to, to make that happen. The mm. Burrow injury is what really is annoying me, right? Because I'm I worry a bit a little bit like last year. He missed training camp, and the first few weeks of the year, he's trying to get his feel back and timing and rhythm and all of that. Yeah. And they started zero and two last year. Yeah, five interceptions week one versus right. the Steelers. Right against the Steelers, exactly right. I'm still going to go over. Ooh. I'm just, just barely, but I'm going to go, you know, 11 and 6. Uh, that's the, you know, 11 and 6, 12 and 5 ish right there. I don't know. I just feel like 10 and 7 is just a few too many losses for that football team. And even with this and the Joe Burrow thing, I'm just, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet with them because uh, I just don't feel comfortable betting against them. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who I'm picking to win this division because I am high on the Ravens, who I did have as a top-five yeah, roster. Right. Sands the quarterback, even though I mean I think Lamar Jackson will even help them even more. He might have a, a career year, which is crazy to say as a former MVP. Um, could be a little different Lamar Jackson this year. Ten and a half is their over-under. They had ten wins last season. And he, this is interesting because they do have 86% of the money on the over, and that has moved the line here. And so this is our first significant move from what it was in the offseason when it opened to what it is right now. The line opened at 8.5 wins for the Ravens. It's up to 10.5. Wow. That's two, that's two full wins up. So yeah. sometimes you see a lot of the money going on on one side or the other, and the line doesn't move. That's Vegas is like, we think we know better than the betting public out there. Here they got kind of worried that the Ravens might be better than they initially thought. Well, I think, yeah, so you get Odell. Odell shifted it perhaps a little bit. You draft Zay Flowers, and then everybody starts gushing about, oh, my gosh, Zay Flowers is a human joystick, and there's 9 million videos of him breaking ankles all summer. And then you saw what he did on Monday night. I'm just telling you, Zay Flowers is going to be the best receiver of the group. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if that didn't look like a Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Tyreek Hill type of guy the other night, then I don't know which one you got to get your eyes checked. Um the it's insane 10 and a half they're they're like there is i'm gonna go over here too barely but yeah i'm a believer on these first two teams the Bengals and the ravens i am now with the ravens what did i write here i i wrote the one of the things i wrote down is in the ravens i just wrote other than the Bengals in week two they're better than their first eight opponents they're better and I'm not saying breaking news here. Yeah, they're better than the Texans, the Colts, the Browns, the Steelers, the Titans, and I think your Lions and Cardinals. Yeah, when you just take it roster for roster, yeah, I, I think that. Hmm. Now, we the offense, what it's going to look like, all that, sure. Marlon Humphrey, you know, coming back. And, 
you know, we didn't hit this. The AFC North is playing the NFC West and the AFC South, just so everybody has that, which I think is still pretty favorable. AFC South, I don't think we're expecting – yeah, anything big. And we just talked about, you know, the NFC West has got two teams and the 49ers and the Seahawks, but yeah. the Rams and the Cardinals are not going to be good. We picked way under when we picked that one. I'm picking over here. But, again, it, this is it's jumbled up tight over one here. It's like, yeah, uh, I'm going to say 11-6. and six. It might come down to a tiebreaker and who wins the division between them and the Bengals. So we've got four overs and two unders so far. But as we mentioned before, those don't need to even out. You can go way over, way under, and the math still checks out. So don't try to get us with math on this podcast here. <laughs> but I do feel like some unders are coming here because uh, we got the Browns next. They were 7-10 and 10 last year. Uh-huh. Their over-under is 9.5. The over is getting bet. 83% of the money is on the over. It's at minus 135. And so it seems like people think the Browns are going to be a 10-win team. What does Chris Sims think? Though? It's torture. This whole exercise is what it is. Okay, <laughs> it, it it really is. It's torture. New brand of football, right? It sounds like they want to throw the ball. Justified to Sean Watson's contract, you know. New defensive coordinator on that side of the ball. I'm gonna go under here. I am. I don't. You know they're scary. I know that. And of course, if Deshaun Watson is, you know, back to what he is, he's he's a game changer. And maybe that'll change some of these things here. You know, but but the Browns, I think, are one of those where, you know, like we've said, I, I got to see a little bit to believe it. I got to see what this offense is going to look like. You know, what what are they going to do? I, I, I just I have a bad feeling they're going to err on throwing the ball too much just to justify the contract. Mm. And then the defense with Schwartz and like we talked about, you know, are there enough difference makers? I just don't know. I, I don't know about that yet either. And they have a pretty tough start, start of their season to where, yeah, I'm not going to just anoint them, right? Like, yeah, the Bengals week one at Pittsburgh week two. That's his even showdown and it's at Pittsburgh, you know? And then, you know, you know I have respect for the Titans and then it's the Ravens and that's the 49ers. I mean, so there's some things here to where if they're going through growing pains, it's going to be more pains than growing. Uh, and that's why I'm going to go under. Yeah, it's – the defensive line, Miles Garrett, but you have added Delvin Tomlinson, yep, Zadarius Smith there. Uh-huh. Uh huh. J O K. Yeah. Weak side linebacker. Yep. J O K. He's going to be down there. He's looking good. He added some weight. I know that. Zadarius, can he stay healthy? That's going to be the question there, too. But no, no, that's what I mean. I mean, it's, this is tough. It really is. I don't know any way to say it. This is going to be a lot of hemming and hawing for me here with uh, some of these guys. These guys, the AFC North is like the AFC East. It's like you you sit there and you go, wait, could all four teams go? Yeah, I mean that that's what you think. Or I think this team is really good, and I'm not picking them to make the playoffs. Right? Maybe that's going to be the case mm-hmm. with the Steelers here, who had nine wins last year because Mike Tomlin never has a losing year. Eight and a half is the over under this year. This is crazy to me. 95% of the money is on the over. How is that even possible? You can't get 95% of people to agree on anything. But <laughs> no. for whatever reason, we all agree that the Steelers are going to hit over eight and a half wins this year. They're agreeing on the, you know, some of the I mean, things you're it. talking about. Yeah, I that's think, true. Right? You know, Here's one thing that I look at about their schedule that really pops to me. That they could be, after four games, they could very easily be three and one. Right? I have no problem going, yeah, they're, they're, they're right. You know, they could beat the Browns at home. They can – the Raiders we just talked about, or we looked at them as one of the lesser teams in the whole conference, and then the Texans as the least team in the whole conference. So, you know, th- there's a team that could build some confidence and kind of get it going there. You know I've loved the way they've looked all preseason. I have on both sides of the ball. So – I don't know what I want to. I, I mean, to me, they're eight and nine or nine and eight, right? That's where they are. Well, if you're, if you're, I'm going to go nine and eight. Exactly. I'm going to go with the over. I am. I'm going with the over here. So have I? I have I picked? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. We might be getting into the part of the math where it goes. Actually, it doesn't make sense now. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, five and of, three. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm good. I'm five and three. Okay, good. Good. Well, we. I do. Yeah, we <laughs> do have the AFC South Pete notes in our ear right now. So I'm looking at here. 
So you have, like some of these, I, I am kind of starting to look at division winners. Like I was looking back at the East there. You do have Jets under, and they're at 9.5. You have the Dolphins over at 9.5, so I guess you can't pick the Jets to win the division now yeah. out in the AFC East. So nope, nope. I'm piecing things You're together. Right. I'm like you. a detective. I'm Thank like you, Columbo, Columbo. <laughs> over here. Uh, Pete notes in our rundown, not sure if you've heard, but Mike Tomlin has never had a losing record. Oh, I've never heard that before. Guess he could still go 8-8-1 eight, eight and one and lose this bet, but uh, I, I'm with you. You're going to go I'm over too? I think so. Yeah. Not that I make a bunch of picks here, but I'll go over because I believe in Mike and the Steelers. No, they're, right. and they're, they're building something. I do feel like they're better than last year. Right. And it just, you know, they're one of those teams that I'm going to go by. I know it's preseason, but I, we hit on it last week where I just said I, I, sometimes the preseason's real and it carries over and what you see. And to me, they've been one of the more impressive teams so far this year. And I'm going to I'm gonna ride that wave a little bit. Except they just look terrible in preseason game number three. We don't know that. We, that could be that. <laughs> and it totally changes. <laughs> Delete what we just said if Well, that we didn't talk about it on the pod. It didn't happen, so it doesn't matter. Yo, yo, thanks for watching, homies. I appreciate it. As always, the NFL season is right around the corner, so now it's your turn to hit subscribe to Chris Sims Unbutton. If you want to get all the training camp battles, preseason film review, playoff predictions, and much, much more, you know where to find it. It's right here, Chris Sims Unbutton. Please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.